there are huge problems in the world of transport, transport planning, traffic engineering, traffic planning, urban planning, and so on and so forth. But the fundamental problem is a total unwillingness to look at evidence. And it's quite clear there's not one council anywhere in England or Scotland or Wales that has ever taken on board two fundamental pieces of evidence. One, there is not one example anywhere in Britain of a congestion problem uh, that has promised to be resolved by building a new road that has been. The next point is, is equally worrying. There isn't one example of a new road with evidence rather than aspirational, aspirational generalities. There isn't one example of a new road built because it would support growth or the local economy or create jobs or attract inward investment that has done any of that. It just does not work that way. There are lots and lots of reviews of the links between building new roads and economic development, inward investment. So anyone in Shrewsbury that thinks this new road will stimulate the local economy is simply mistaken from an empirical evidence case study point of view. If you really, really do want to get rid of congestion, you really do want to improve an economy, you start off with things like education, high-quality schools, high-quality public transport, high-quality community facilities, high-quality youth facilities, and, and the whole, what some people call social capital, the whole social infrastructure. Because these are far more important than a shiny road to enable some people, one person weighing 75 kilos, sitting in one car, weighing one tonne, trying to drive somewhere when there's lots of buses as an alternative, or there should be. Now, why is it that in German cities, I can take you to half a dozen car-free residential areas with 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 people who willingly, willingly go and live there because they can't park their car, and there's no car parking. They're designed to be car-free. And they work really well. Uh, they do need something we don't know much about in Britain, which is called high-quality public transport, that is put in place before the houses are built. Uh, if you want to see real stupidity, and it's not just a Shropshire problem, it's a general problem in this country, we will build a housing estate in a big green field where there's no pedestrian footpath, no cycling facilities, and the last saw a bus in 1934. So if you want to move from the sublime and the utopian and the intelligent to the other end of the scale, you can look at Copthorne Barracks. 458 car parking spaces for 216 dwellings on a road with a frequent bus service, which is within walking and cycling distance of most destinations in Shrewsbury. Who on earth would want to give that planning permission? The answer is Shropshire Council. Uh, and we want to really, really, really come to terms with the climate emergency, then what we really need to do is something superb and big and game-changing and significant. Car-free Shrewsbury within the city loop. There is a river loop. There, there is no reason whatsoever. <laughs> this, the geography... <clears throat> I'm an old-fashioned geographer. The, the, the geography of Shrewsbury is absolutely ideal. That area there within the river loop could be car free. Superb park and ride, superb electric buses, superb walking and cycling. Zero carbon, car free. So what's wrong with it? Just do it and stop faffing about. <laughs> <laughs>